Hello, my name is Liana, and today I'm here to review my friend Laura Josephson's book, Dust and Gold. Laura and I have known each other for many years here. I met her through reading her Vaughn and Pinella fan fiction called She is the Sunlight many moons ago. I just fell in love with that story and her writing so much, and I would review every chapter, and then Laura would reply to those reviews, and we got talking, and then we just became the best of friends. And I found out that she wrote original fiction, and I've been lucky enough to read some of the drafts that she's been working on while she's been doing that, or just some of the final products, and though I actually ordered Dust and Gold a while ago, it sadly took me this long to finally finish it, but I'm so glad I finally did, because it has to be my favorite book that she's ever written. The story of Dust and Gold starts when Princess Elspeth has to marry a prince from another kingdom in order for peace and all that kind of thing, and she is heavily against the idea that her Kingsguard Rafe is kind of there to help her through, even though he doesn't like the idea either because he's in love with her. But since she knows that a princess's duty is to herself and is to the kingdom and not herself, she very bravely goes through with it, but the night of the ceremony, this prince tries to kill her and then frames her for the murder of her father, her and Rafe, he frames that is, so they have to escape the castle for their lives and then try and find a way to clear Elspeth's name, restore her to the throne, and all of that good stuff. And on that journey, they meet four people who help them out. The first one is Cecily, who is in her probably mid to late, just starting to get somewhat late-ish 20s, who is an enchantress, and she had to have her legs amputated when this curse reached her kingdom that killed nearly all of the women there and was starting to kill her. And since it started in her legs, the only way to save her was to amputate them. And that's just a great example of how Laura just puts so many different characters from all kinds of walks of life in her story, which is something I've always appreciated about her work. And Cecily is just a warm character who loves everyone, and even when she learns some troubling things about Elspeth's family that should maybe put her against her, she knows the kind of person Elspeth is, and says stays steadfast in supporting her. And her husband, Landon, is, who is an alchemist, is exactly the same way, and just, he's so kind and loving, and just the kind of guy that all we girls would want, to be honest, and I can't say enough good things about the Striders, that's their last name, they're a married couple. And then your other two characters are Griffin and Willa. Griffin is a mage and Willa is a thief. Willa had to learn to become a thief when her mother died when both of them were young and then they like stayed at an orphanage for a while but it was abusive to them so they had to escape. and. Griffin is trying to get into like the sort of mages council, a mages license so he can do that, but since they won't like take Will in with him, he's been loath to get it and leave her, but at the same time when the story's starting, they both know that like he needs one because it would probably help them out in life, and if Cecily, Cecily and Landon promise that they will pay for the money for Griffin to take his test to get certified if they help them steal this item that Elspeth and Rafe need because at that point they've already met Elspeth and, Elspeth and Rafe and that's really where the story starts and I love all these characters so much, the story's so good, the world is so well thought out. You can tell that Laura put so much thought just figuring out this fantasy world and making it believable and fluid and well lived in and god I was just talking about Willa but I don't think I touched on her enough. She She's a character that had to grow on me because I felt like she was a little hard on Elspeth at first and thinking that she was just a sheltered princess who was as terrible as everyone else she'd ever met in her life and didn't deserve to hear her story yet but as the story progresses like Willa warms up I mean she was always warm but her and Elspeth get so 
close and it's such a beautiful relationship to behold and she's definitely so funny and says it what it says it like it is like it is and is the comic relief from the story that you're so glad is there and her and Griffin's relationship is really just the cutest. Elspeth is a perfect example of how you can have a heroine who isn't a fighter but you know is active, is smart, is there, is learns and is relevant and she wants to fight slavery and when it's found out in the story that her like father and grandfather and great great grandfather were all conquerors the grandfather and great grandfather doing it in the normal way of going to lands and fighting and conquering them but her father doing it in subtle ways like causing that plague and making everyone think that he was like the coming hero who came to save them when it was over with a cure that helped a few people when really he was the one who caused it and did this to get them to join his kingdom unknowingly. Like, Elspeth has a lot on her shoulders to deal with with that, but she does it so beautifully and thoroughly and she never changes who she is. She knows who she is. She's not her family, not her family and sticks to it and fights the good fight to be to get her crown back and be a good ruler and the ruler this kingdom had never had before and to even do right by the countries that had wrongfully been assimilated into her own and then Rafe is also a lot of fun because he's so he's so in love with Elspeth and it's so plain for everyone to see but he's also so guarded that it's hard to get a read on him sometimes even though Elspeth thinks that he's the like, easiest person to read you'll ever meet. And I just thought that was something so clever that Laura did, that it's like when you're reading from Elspeth's point of view, you get Rafe so much because she does, but then when you're reading from others, it's somewhat harder to understand him. There's just some really clever writing there. And the plot is well layered, well thought out. The characters are glorious. There's so much fun in this story. If you love medieval, if you love fantasy, I cannot recommend Dust and Gold enough. It has to be one of my favorite books now alongside the host Phantom of the Opera and Scorpio Race Races by Maggie Steve Otter and I just I can't thank Laura enough for it and I get why. The story got so many good reviews on Wattpad before she self-published it and I hope it just it's even more than it already has. If you're looking for a good book to read, you read this one right now. I promise you won't regret it.